we're going to have a conversation. And uh, we're going to have a conversation, a dialogue that is going to be centered around the I word, not Enterize, but intentionality. And uh, one of the things that Enterize is really trying to work towards is um, creating pathways for an economy that works for all. So what my role is at the African American Chamber of Commerce is to work with small to medium sized businesses. And in doing so, we're looking at systemic generational barriers that have existed throughout the years, throughout decades, centuries. So for me, generational exclusion is, is systemic. Mm -hmm. And um, it, the way that we are dealing with it is through the, the contracts and the various opportunities that we present to business owners within our ecosystem in Cincinnati. We were the first uh, city in Texas to actually have a program that required that goals be, MWBE goals, be on city contracts. And our program has been in existence for 36 years. Some might say, well, you know, what, how do you measure success? You know, out of the $7 billion that we've spent in the last four years in goods and services, $2 billion of those dollars were actually spent with uh, M MWBE. So that is the, the, the city's focus, is to make sure that we are as inclusive as possible. With the work of AMP UP and NRISE, we were able to work with NRISE to create a program called AMP UP Charlotte. And AMP UP Charlotte is the streetwise MBA program. Really, how do we solve connecting MBEs and small business owners with procurement opportunities with anchor institutions? Most anchor institutions have supply diversity programs but it's really getting those programs off the ground. So how can we partner with local government, our community college, our universities? Really, they have great purchasing models, but are they purchasing with the local community? Are they purchasing with our small and ethnic communities? So again, our AMP UP program, we try to introduce those relationships. We try to make sure that they come in the room and give good feedback on how do you procure with Atrium Health. If you are a supplier company and you supply pins and you want to work with the NBA, yes, you may be able to supply pins to the Charlotte Hornets, but the NBA is a global institution. So how do you understand that they, only, they don't need 100 pins, they may need 5 million pins. And really thinking about the whole grasp of their purchasing opportunity. So I think with our AMPA program, we're creating great strides of really how to understand how to procure with large organizations. To look at all the different ways that your own policies and programs are creating hurdles for entrepreneurs, especially entrepreneurs of color, and then you reverse them or you add more resources internally um, to make it easier for them, that makes such an impact. And so what we're seeing across the country are like city, um, cities like uh, Long Beach are saying, city can't do this by themselves, we shouldn't be. Um, yeah, we have a Kiva program, but we shouldn't be running it by ourselves. Like, we have all these community-based organizations that are working directly with entrepreneurs. But then, we see cities say, you know what, it's not just about the policies and the programs, it's our behavior. It's what we actually think. And that's part of the root causes of driving these inequities. It's how we think about the people who we are serving. What have we done as a city to reinforce the red line, to reinforce the barriers to education, to reinforce the challenges in getting loans and financing. What can we do differently? So that, that thinking and, and, and behavior change that was necessary is something that we're very excited about working. One thing that we're going to do, begin doing with our AMPA graduates is to create a program with our regional alliance. It used to be our Charlotte Chamber, but now they're more regional. And, and, and organizations, excuse me, called entrepreneurs organizations, a graduate program that we're going to have more networking based because we found that once you graduate from the program, you have the educational knowledge. What? Well, how can I in, go to do new networks? How do I enter fields? How do I enter organizations that I don't usually enter? So that's our next step. So this year, we're launching the Closing the Gaps Network. It's a network that is to address some of the hunger that we're hearing from folks in the, in the field. Um, and they're gonna, what we hope is that um, up to 30 cities who want to, want to commit to closing racial income and wealth gaps will partner with us um, to be part of this network where they will be able to build their own competencies, address their racial um, histories, and marry that with strategies like uh, inclusive procurement, like building inclusive economic 
um, ecosystems like building um, home ownership. And we're partnering and learning from folks like the Government Alliance for Racial Equity, Policy Link, uh, National League of Cities, and ICMA as well, because they have these types of programs. And we're saying, we're working in cities, we're, but we're not leveraging each other's um, investments and resources as well. So how can we coordinate better? So what we hope is that cities like all of yours will consider what it would mean to be part of a community of practice of leaders who are committed over the next 10 years to see closing racial income and wealth gaps in your city.